रसोई प्रधानमंत्री उज्ज्वला योजना के तहत 10 करोड़ गैस कनेक्शन हमारा संकल्प क्या प्लान है सोच रहा हूँ गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज में इन्वेस्ट कर बिल्कुल सही सोच रहे हैं आप अब गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज में इन्वेस्ट करना आसान हो गया है पर कैसे आरबीआई रिटेल डायरेक्ट स्कीम में बिना ब्रोकर के आप इन्वेस्ट कर सकते और आपको आपकी पूंजी आरोप मिलेगी रिटर्न आरबीआई पोर्टल पर जाइए मुफ्त में अकाउंट खोलिए और अपने बैंक खाते से सीधे पैसे इन्वेस्ट कीजिए सुरक्षित आसान रिटायरमेंट के बाद मैं भी यही इन्वेस्ट करूँ बहुत सही कह रहे हैं अब आरबीआई कहता है जानकार बनिए सतर्क रहिए Sans pied, chanel, pas pour la. 
Tanya Senyeleha Ke punlek iyo Take bage Telum dole Atasha ki
Good evening and welcome to Dodashan Kendra Kohima. I am Kidu Khoutapi with the news for the headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says meat in India has become an influential brand. Vice President Jagdeep Dankar inaugurates two-day-long Atal Health Fair in Lucknow. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh emphasised the need to embrace innovation while maintaining the tradition of the armed forces. Second edition of All Nagaland Fox Song and Fox Fusion competition held at Kuzama. Now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that today the global discourse is centered around India and made in India has become an influential brand. Addressing the gathering after inaugurating the ambitious diamond boards in Surat, the ambitious diamond board in Surat, the Prime Minister urged diamond industrialists to take maximum benefit of this favorable environment and take the Indian gyms and jewelry sector to new heights of development. The Prime Minister said that the Diamond Bores project is a symbol of strength and resolution of new India. Prime Minister Modi said India is a leading country in diamond cutting and exporters. However, the share of Indian gyms and jewellery sector in the global export is still low. He said the newly built terminal, the status of the international airport and the enhanced connectivity to the Surat airport which will hugely benefit the diamond and textile industries in Surat. Calling the Diamond Bores project a product of Modi guarantee, Modi said that the newly built Diamond Bores will connect with 125 countries. He also reiterated that the central government's commitment to enhance the infrastructure development, Diamond Bores will be the world's largest corporate office which will have state-of-the-art facilities. Earlier, the Prime Minister inaugurated the integrated terminal building of Surat Airport. Vice President Jagdeep Dankar inaugurated the two-day-long Atal Health Fair in memory of former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee at the PNT ground in Rajajipuram, Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh today. Speaking on the occasion, the Vice President said that Atal Bihari Vajpayee led Lucknow in the country for a long time. Uttar Pradesh Governor Anandivan Patil, Deputy CM Brajesh Pratak and Member of Parliament in Rajya Sabha Dr. Dinesh Sharma also graced the occasion. The Vice President added that today's youth is getting all the opportunities. You just need to take care of the health as without good health you cannot perform well and achieve anything. In Amrit Kal, youth has the responsibility to always work with the nation first approach. 48 government and private hospitals are holding medical camps at the fair. <laughs> तो स्वास्थ्य पर बड़ा भारी कुप्रभाव पड़ता है। आज के दिन बदलाव देखिए। तकनीका तकनीकी का उपयोग इतना जबरदस्त हुआ है कि जो कहते थे दिल्ली से एक रुपया भेजते हैं, उसका दस परसेंट भी नहीं पहुंचता है। आज के दिन खरा सौ परसेंट पहुंचता है। Singh today emphasized the need to embrace innovation while maintaining the tradition of the armed forces. Addressing the newly commissioned flight cadets of the combined graduation period held at the Air Force Academy at Dundigal, Singh said conventions are important to follow but they have to be coupled with innovation. He asked them to have a balance of conventions and innovations so that they could fight out challenges in reality. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal V. R. Chowdhury has was also present at the event. Seen earlier presented the President's Commission of the Graduating Flight Cadets on completion of the training. Earlier, over 200 flight cadets, including 25 women officers, 8 from the Indian Navy, 9 from Indian Coast Guards, and 2 from friendly foreign countries of the flying and ground duty branch have taken part in the precisely held parade. The synchronized fly-past-by trainer aircraft comprising three Pelitas PC-7, MK-2, three Hawk, three Kiran, besides three Chitak helicopters and trailed the spectators. Viksit Bharat Sankalp Yatra 
campaign is running over the nation. The object of the campaign is to give the benefit of the central government sponsored schemes to the economically backward classes. In Maharashtra, Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri participated in the Vixid Bharat Sankalp Yatra program in Chandrapur district. Talking to the media, the minister said that the government officials are directed to engage with the citizens who are not able to avail the benefit of the welfare schemes under the VBSY campaign and ensure that they receive the intended benefit. In the Jalna district of Maharashtra, Minister of State for Railways, Coal and Mines, Rao Sahib Patel Danve participated in the Vixit Bharat Sankalp Yatra program. He said that the central government have been providing 6,000 rupees to beneficiary farmers annually under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Saman Nidhi scheme. Union Minister also appealed the eligible farmers to apply for the scheme by VBSY counters. Meanwhile, Minister of the State for Panchayati Raj Kapil Patel participated in the Vixit Bharat Sankalp Yatra program in Palgar. Patel said that for the last nine and a half year, Prime Minister Narendra Modi have been working for the welfare of the poor people of the country. He added the Vixit Bharat Sankalp Yatra program is an opportunity for us to realize the dream of Prime Minister to make Bharat a developed nation by the year 2047. Director General of Police Jammu and Kashmir, R.R. Swain, informed the three hybrid terrorists involved in last week attack on a policeman in the Bina area of Srinagar city have been arrested today. Constable Mohammad Hafiz Chak was attacked on the 9th of December while he was returning home. The DGB said that the conspiracy was hatched by one Pakistani-based terrorist, Arjuman Alais Hamza Burhan, who got in touch with the local mastermind Danish Ahmed Malau to carry out the attack. While briefing reporters, the DGB said that Constable Mohammad Hafiz Chak fortunately survived the attack. Swain said that Mala, who lives in the same locality, recruited two hybrid terrorists, Imtiyas Kande and Mehnan Khan. He further informed that during the questioning, the terrorists revealed a list of targets that they have finalized. Most of the targets were policemen, but there were also non-policemen also on their radar. Hybrid terrorists are those who carry out attacks and then slip back into their routine lives. Kerala has reported a rise in active COVID cases and the latest COVID-19 sub-variant JN.1 was detected in the state as informed by the Union Health Ministry. There have been increase in the number of COVID cases in Kerala for the past few weeks. Presently, there are 1,224 COVID cases in the state, which is the highest in the country. The latest COVID-19 sub-variant JN.1 was confirmed in a native of Thiruvananthapuram and the patient is stable now. State Health Minister Vina George said that there is no situation of panic and that the situation is being closely monitored and vigilance is required, especially in patients with comorbidities. Meanwhile, the Union Health Ministry said that it is in constant touch with the State Health Department and monitoring all the steps. The Emir of Kuwait, Sikh Nawaf al Hamad al Sabah, passed away at the age of 86. He has been in power for the last three years. Kuwait state television broke into programming with Quaramic verse just before a somber official made the announcement. In November, Sikh Nawaf was admitted to the hospital due to an emergency health problem. He was later declared to be in stable condition. Sikh Nawaf was named Crown Prince in 2016 by his half-brother Sikh Sabah al Ahmed al Sabah, who took over as Emir when Sikh Sabah died in September 2020 at the age of 91. He had to steer the economy through a crisis caused by the fall in oil oil price in 2020. Born in 1937, Sikh Nawaf was the fifth son of Kuwait late ruler Sikh Ahmad al-Jabir al-Sabah, who ruled from 1921 to 1950. Kuwait Crown Priest Sikh Meshal al-Ahmed al-Jabir al-Sabah was named the country's new emir after the death of predecessor Sikh Nawaf. Meanwhile, the government have declared one day of state mourning today throughout the country as a mark of respect of the mayor of Kuwait. The cause of his death was not immediately disclosed. The second edition of All Nagaland Folk Song and Folk Fusion Competition, organized by the Kekre Kroto in collaboration with the Task Force for Music and Arts, was held last evening at Kuzama Playground, Kohima, Nagaland. 
The event was held under the theme Strings of the Past, Melody of the Future. Member of the Legislative Assembly, Dr. Tsilhutyo Rutso, in his address as a special guest, acknowledged Tafma for making the music industry in Kohima alive while also making a living out of it. Stating that Naglin excels in folk songs and fusions, he maintained that one must continue to strive and keep the traditions alive. Dr. Atto also stated that in order to live in peace as one, one must do away with tribalism as it is the root cause of all destruction and inequality and work together for a better Naglen. Aten Le Sep was a judge first in the Fox Song competition while Menul Hunyo Lise secured the second position. In the solo Fox Fusion competition, Sabino Hibo was declared the winner while Alo Ina and Krel Hubi Kamo was a judge the second and third respectively. Taroho Group was declared the winner in the group Fox Song competition while Pomi Student Union secured the second position. I was just sitting down there and thinking that yes, how educated you may be. One day a time will come when we may have to be educated farmers. Second, Aloina. Congratulations, Aloina. The winner for solo. Congratulations, Sabino. Let us look at the weather reports of the district headquarters of Nagaland. Maximum temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 7 degrees Celsius. While Dimapur had a maximum temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 11 degrees Celsius, Wokha experienced a maximum temperature of 19 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 12 degrees Celsius, Mokokchung had a maximum temperature of 21 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 9 degrees Celsius, Mon had a maximum temperature of 22 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 12 degrees Celsius, Towards the east, Twinsang had a maximum temperature of 14 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 5 degrees Celsius. Zinebuto had a maximum temperature of 19 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 7 degrees Celsius. Pak had a maximum temperature of 14 degrees Celsius and a minimum temperature of 6 degrees Celsius. That's all for the weather report. To end the news, here's a recap of the main points. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says made in India has become an influential brand. Vice President Jagdeep Dankar inaugurated two-day long Atal Health Fair in Lucknow. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh emphasized the need to embrace innovation while maintaining the tradition of armed forces. Second edition of All Naglin Fox Song and Fox Fusion competition held at Kuzama. With this, we have come to the end of this evening bulletin. Thank you for watching. Good night.